Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. We are where? We oh, are gosh. In Wisconsin. Cheese right. state. We are in the cheese state, and it's a green state. Yeah, it is. It's a dry state for now, and yeah. it hasn't been raining, which is great. Won't be dry for long, though. Um, we stopped by here to say hello to a good friend. And yeah. There's going to be videos following about that. Um, terrible, terrible drive through Chicago. I do not like Chicago's traffic. At all. You've never been through Chicago, have you? No. It's just as bad as driving through New York. I warned you. Yeah, mind yeah. you. I didn't Did I not? I didn't want to do it, but then you said that was the only way to go. There is no other way to go around. If you're from anywhere in these parts, you know that, you know, this area is full of toll roads. Yeah. And, you know, it costs like 15 bucks That's to get to. Yeah. yeah. So, so, the other option would have been to go to Omaha <laughs> and then cut back up to Minneapolis and then over to Milwaukee, but, yeah. or something like that. But it was. It Isn't was that? really bad yeah. yesterday. Like, I've been through Chicago several times, and this was Chicago's worst probably. parking lot. It was Mother's Day. A lot of people out, probably, and a lot of bad drivers out. I mean, I had a Dodge. It's a good thing I took defensive force driving in high school to learn how to dodge bad drivers. But it was this is a bad experience. Not something that you want to ever do again. No, I would venture to say. Yeah. Chicago's not the place that I actually We literally had to get off the highway. I mean it was it was literally a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Just just right going through downtown Chicago by the Sears Tower we got off. And we ended up meandering down by the lake shore and then cutting across roads. And it was trafficy there too. Yeah. And we had big old potholes that if massive I would have gotten holes. our tire in there and would have had a blow on. But it really was I was bad. Like, maneuver all around. But you know what, it was all well worth it because Char is somebody that we truly wanted to meet in person. Yep. We've had many conversations with her on the phone. We've had her on the show twice. Dear, dear friend. And needless to say, she was super excited to see us. She was. Us. We were. She was like, oh my God, you guys. <laughs> you're real. Can't believe you're here. You guys are real. Oh, yeah. So it's true. Yeah. You know, people do actually meet people that actually exist on, online. Yeah. Online and on so Facebook. Well and yeah, it was it was really cool. I mean, we we sat down in a Mexican restaurant and we just chatted and um, had some great conversation and you know hugs and you know it was just really a cool experience. You know, she was very sweet and you know I mean I can't say enough nice things about Shar. We love you, Shar. Yeah, we do, and uh, we can't wait to see you again sometime in the future you yeah. know i mean we go back and forth across the country we're not just like on some trip where we're gonna like be going and then we have to get back to work this is our life yeah. so you know i i don't know if people are, under, quite no, understand i know everybody's that, having, yeah, a nice trip. having a nice trip it's, it's like trip. there's no trip it. i mean some people choose to live in boxes you know and they choose to have more boxes to store their stuff in and, you know, just continue this consume, consume, live beyond your means when you really don't have to do that. And you, you trade the comforts that you think you're getting in an apartment or in a house or something like this where your house becomes, your vehicle becomes your house and your backyard anywhere you want it to be. And I, you know, I really don't quite understand why you know especially our parents you know they just flip out knowing that we're doing this as you know as a lifestyle and you know some people would say but you guys need to have a place to call your own you need to pay rent like the rest of us do and you need to live life the way that we do and it's like no you don't i mean you're paying you rent you're paying the landlord's mortgage when you're paying a mortgage the bank is the one that actually owns your house by the time you're done paying those 30 years of interest, the house that you've paid, it, you've paid it five times, you know, and it's just, well, you can't take it with you. No, so why not can't. the experiences you're living that you take with you? Because that is like a library that your spirit just gathers of all these wonderful connections and all these wonderful sense stimulation that you get when you do this. And you're buying into a system that basically is artificial. 
you know, because if you don't pay your rent, mm -hmm. it's not yours. They kick you out. They'll kick you out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, if you have a house and, you know, they foreclose on you because you didn't pay the mortgage, you're out. Yeah. You know, it's not yours. And if you don't pay taxes on that said house, they you're out. Away. Yeah. You know, so. So it's an illusion. It is. It. It's false. You know what's real? That grass right there. Those trees. Those trees. You know, the birds don't have a place to, you know, own. No, they I just live yeah. in nature. And that's yeah. what we are. We are natural creatures, just like they are, just yeah. as much as they are. I've been sold a lie that we have to live in this matrix and follow the set guidelines that they give to you. Because by you doing that, you're perpetrating the elitist world. You're yeah. giving them what they want. We're their yeah. slaves. So you got to break free from the matrix, from the enslavement. You know? And, you know, we just want to be able to share with you the experience of two people who have broken free from that. Yeah. You know, broken free from those stresses and those places in our lives that we have to feel that we have to go to. You know, like you graduate college and you're assumed to have to take on incredible amounts of debt. Yeah. You know, for those college students out there that, you know, you guys are struggling to make ends meet. And still paying your student loans. And still paying <laughs> your student loans. You know, there is a better way. Yeah. You don't have to buy into the system. The system is broken. Very broken. And it wants you to feel like, you know, it's the only resort left. You know, it's the, it's the last thing that you would ever do would be to take off and have some kind of freedom you know you you have freedom then the system tries to label people that don't live in a box as homeless you know trying to give you some sort of bad stigma and that is nothing but a lie you know your home is where you make it you know if you if you want to live in a tent that's your home if you want to live in your car that's your home or a van or an rv whatever it is and you know there's people out there that can't do this we're not knocking, oh, yeah, no, that's of fine, course. but this is what works for us. So we want to put that as a disclaimer. We're not knocking anyone down. Yeah. This is what works for us, and we're sharing what works for us with you, for those of you who feel that maybe you can do this. And it's rather inexpensive. You know, we've had some people ask us questions. Well, yeah. how much does it cost to do this, and how much do you spend on an average day? You know, it depends if we're eating. Like sometimes the weather isn't good, so I can't go ahead and make our meals, so we have to eat out. Right. So that is dependent because the car, you know, doesn't waste hardly any gas. I mean, this is a great, great um, yeah. gas conserver. I mean, the the key to it is to keep your costs down. And yeah. one of the most expensive parts of, you know, any budget when someone's deciding to live a nomadic lifestyle in their car or van or RV or whatever is the cost of fuel. Yeah. And fuel in this car, you know, 3,200 miles we've driven, three, what is it? 3,386 miles, and we've spent about $140 on gas. That is minuscule compared to the amounts of money that you could expect to pay Say if you had an RV or a van, and if you have the money for it, and that's what the budget driving a lot, you know, because in the beginning, this we first two weeks weather. we had to dodge weather, and we've been trying to cover a lot. So when we settle down a little bit more, maybe stay a week or two in places, yeah, it won't be as much gas, you know. So um, it's very Look doable. At that soaring eagle. Wow, it's very doable, you know. And if you keep your food cost. You know, so the average on a daily cost would depend on where we eat and how much we travel, but anywhere from twenty to thirty-five dollars a day. Right. Okay. So, and that's you know, uh, a lot of times we camp out in a rest stop or in a Walmart or in a Target or in a Cracker Barrel. We go to the parks, and the parks can range anywhere from five to fifteen dollars a stay. So even if you average ten dollars a day in campground, let's say you wanted to stay in a campground every day, that's three hundred dollars a month. But we're finding that you know what really works for us a lot of times is just a good old rest area because yeah. it has what a bathroom, a bathroom tables out I mean, there for home. for cooking food, yeah. and a safe, relatively safe parking yeah. 
area that, you know, is has people coming in and out of it all the time. So it's not like it's secluded or anything. It's people are coming in and out. Trucks are parked in the back all the time. You know, truckers are resting or whatnot. And it's really a, a great, a great place. Uh, so far, I would say my favorite yeah. is staying in a rest yeah, area over a campground. Yeah, because we could work out, we mm-hmm. could make breakfast, we could make dinner at night, you know, we could wash up because it's got the bathrooms and you always need a shower. You wash up with what, you know, it's soap and water and your washcloth and whatever and right there and then the bathroom. You know? A lot of them have family restrooms, yeah. gender neutral, and, you know, it's really nice for privacy and yeah. stuff like that. And, you know, since there's not that many people coming into these places, the restrooms are always unoccupied, yeah. you know. So. The key is to be respectful. Leave everything as you found it. Um, do not overstay your welcome. You should just stay one night, right? you know, because there's plenty of them out there. So we want to keep it safe and good for everyone to be able to use them. Some states aren't as friendly as other states regarding staying. South Carolina, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. But even those, if you don't make a ruckus and you don't, you know, you just go do by your business and stay one night, you're not going to have a problem. Yeah, if you just like, you know, you just play nonchalant and just, you know, you're courteous and, yeah. you know, respectful and you don't leave a mess. I mean, mm-hmm. that that makes it so that other people can enjoy exactly. rest areas for what they're intended, for people to stop and rest and then recover and Keep get back on, on the road. Exactly. That's what we do. So now we are heading out towards the Wisconsin Dells and then out towards uh, Minneapolis and then up into Fargo, North Dakota, and then out by the end of tomorrow, I think, we're going to be out by Theodore Roosevelt National Park in uh, the border of North Dakota, Montana. So this is where basically the West begins for us when we get out that way. and. Um, You know, the Midwest is a sea of storms a lot of times, so we don't like spending a lot of time in the Midwest, especially in the spring or in the East now. A lot of bugs. Uh, Too many bugs. I don't know, we we covered uh, why we didn't continue the path to the East. We found out there's a lot of bugs. This time of year, everything's hatching from being dormant. You got ticks, fleas, chiggers. Um, What are those uh, flies that bite the heck out of you? And... You know, it's no fun having to camp out with bugs like that. It makes it a little annoying. Yeah, so. and we always wondered why nomads don't talk about much about camping out east and stuff like that. And one of the biggest reasons is that bugs. no, nobody wants to deal with that kind of thing. I know I don't. I don't and like when I looked up information about Maine, I was like, oh, it's not that buggy. And then I looked up some information about Maine, and it was like, buggy. oh my. God, it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, we're saying, don't do it. they said don't even bother coming out. You know, unless it's like past August, you know, don't even bother coming out. So we'll come out again, this, you know, out that way and up to Michigan again as well. But, you know, it's just not worth it when yeah. you don't have to deal yeah, with bugs. Out in the West, you don't have to deal with bugs. So. So that's, you know, where, we gotta be so that's where we're going. That's where the nomads are going. Yep. Gypsy will take us. That's Gypsy. right. So we'll uh, update you guys some more later yeah. and yeah. give you some more information about what we find out. And again, go, 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 go Gypsy. Gypsy.